Hi, I'm Gary Bowden, and welcome to the first episode of the third season of Zara TV at ZaraZone.com. This month, I'm going to show you the difference between metal and plastic. One of the most obvious differences is you probably don't want to get hit in the head with a metal beach ball. Seriously, a lot of talented Zara artists like to draw things that are reflective and made out of plastic and made out of metal, and the reflections aren't the same. So come along this month, I'm going to show you the differences and improve your skill set. To begin this month, go to ZaraZone.com forward slash tutorials. Scroll down the page, click on the Downloads button to download this month's zip archive, unpack it on your system, and get ready to load it in Zara. In order to understand why plastic and metal, both reflective materials, are drawn differently, I need to go nerd on you for just a moment, so pull up a pillow if this gets to be a little much. We see things in the world because light reflects off a surface and then bounces toward us. Now, let's start with a mirror finish. When we take a look at a mirror, we see a fairly accurate view of ourselves because the light bounces back to us in a highly focused way. You might have seen this diagram in high school, showing the light traveling toward and hitting a mirror. The angle at which the light hits the parallel of the surface is called the angle of incidence. When the light reflects and all the light waves travel back in a parallel way, this is called a mirror angle, and it's the reason why you can see your feet in a mirror from one angle, but not your face. Rough objects, and plastic on a molecular level is rough, not perfectly mirror-like, they refract light. What this means is that the angle of incidence is not equal to the angle of reflection, so we call it refraction. The light waves scatter as they return to the viewer, and for that reason, plastics don't reflect a perfectly focused image. In fact, most plastics absorb an awful lot of the incident light, and that refraction is done in a generally incoherent fashion. There is a high degree of diffuse reflections cast from plastic. As an example of diffusion, um, a wall. A uh, wall makes a lousy mirror because it refracts a high amount of diffuse light and almost no reflective. So what are the characteristics of and differences between these two materials so you can better draw what you see? All surfaces that visibly reflect have two reflective components. There's a specular highlight and the specular reflection. With metal, the highlight is usually crisp and it is the color of the metal. So you can see here that it's a tint of gold. The reflection is well defined and with metals that are close to white, the reflections are in color. Plastic, on the other hand, displays a diffuse, soft, specular reflection. The highlight is almost always white on planets that are illuminated by a white star, and the reflections are soft and shades of the color of the plastic, not the real color of the objects reflecting into this yo-yo. Okay, wake up. Enough science junk. Let's do the tutorial. Open the default Chrome and the clouds document in Zara now and let's go. If you open the page in layer gallery, you'll see that you're drawing on a blank layer and I've locked the images underneath. I want you to select and copy the clouds image in the document and then toggle over to the Chrome document and paste it. That's the top part of this Chrome ball. The classical treatment of a Chrome sphere when illustrating it is clouds on top, then a horizon, and then a ground plane. To begin this amazing illustration, with the ellipse tool, hold Ctrl and Shift to draw from the center and constraint to a circle, and then choose the selector tool and put the circle on top of the clouds. Now choose the uh, dropper tool and select a color from the ground over here. Now this is going to be an elliptical fill, so what I want you to do is get the color editor and we're going to make this a little bit lighter to begin with. Choose the fill tool and then choose elliptical. Now click on the center handle and with the eyedropper click the lightest color in the image then click on the outer handle and let's choose a darker one and I think what we want to do is uh, mess with this a little bit using the attributes so that the center is a little bit lighter. Now classically illustrators have made chrome balls with a bright sky on top, a horizon in the center, and a ground on the bottom. So this is the first pose I'm going to show you and we're going to work with, and I'll show you a couple of things later that are chromish. Now select the sky and press Control shift b to put it to back. What we want to do is make distorted clouds as we have in the image. So you're going to use the mold tool and put it in ellipse. Now what I want you to do is convert that to editable shapes, Control shift s and then we're going to put a perspective on it because as you can see the clouds are larger on top in the image. So take your time and let's mess with this. Now 
Now with the eraser tool, you're going to uh, mask the bottom of this, just like you see in the image. Uh, the eraser tool is new to versions 8 and 9. So you can see here that uh, you can see here that I missed a piece at the bottom. Just a moment. Here we go. Okay, and I've moved that down a little bit. And once you think you're where you're at with the top, let's use the shape builder tool to make the horizon. Now this has got the last used fill, which is a gradient, so I'm going to click on a brown here and dismiss the box that says I want to replace all colors, so we're good. The Shape Builder tool is new to versions 8 and 9, and it's really a godsend. I, I suggest you upgrade if you haven't already. Add a little bit more to it. So this is our horizon. And I'm sampling from the image again. So that's a nice color of brown. What I'm going to do now is group the two shapes and then use the eraser tool again to make the horizon neat, as you can see over at right. So if you're clumsy like me, do this. Okay, that's a pretty good looking horizon. I want to move it. Next, we're going to add some embellishments. The, uh, the buildings you can see on the horizon at left and right, that's, a, that's also a classical treatment. Airbrush artists do that all the time. You need to see, you know, a chrome sphere gets all of its detail from reflections. So I'm making uh, little arcs over at right. And by the way, um, this tutorial, for as long as it seems, um, isn't complete. Uh, you might want to add some detail, like little lights in the buildings and stuff. Now, once you've got them, and I'm uh, coloring them a little bit different color, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, uh, with, with each object selected, I'm going to uh, slice off the tops with the eraser tool. So uh, very few buildings are blobby at the top and at the bottom. So that's what I'm doing. So one of the techniques you can use with the Shape Builder tool to make rectangles that arc and things is to uh, make, your, uh, make your blobby arcs and then trim them at top and bottom. And I'm just finessing this a little bit more. And once I'm happy with it, and once you're happy with yours, what we'll do is we'll address the shadow at the bottom. Okay, what you can see here is I'm not entirely happy with that shape at left, and all you do is you select the shape tool, marquee, select a few of the uh, control points, and then move them over. Now with the ellipse tool, you're going to create the shadow inside the sphere. So with an ellipse, you want to rotate it a little bit and convert that to editable shapes. I've got the icon on the uh, toolbar. With the shape tool, select the top control point and pull it down a little bit. So we have a uh, drop shadow that is, uh, that is distorted. With the selector tool, select all the objects and either press Q to create the clip view or choose it from the arrange menu. And what that does is it clips all the top shapes to that bottom circle. And as you can see, this needs a little more illustration work, but it's pretty good. With the ellipse tool, create the drop shadow. That can be a solid dark color. And the very last thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to create the specular highlight, which is white and it's small and it's at the upper left. So I'm going to go get some white now. And as you can see in the picture, it's slightly hazy. That might be because of atmosphere or something. So you choose the feather slider and make it a little fuzzy and make it a little transparent. And as I said, you add a little more detail work to this and I think you have a pretty decent looking chrome ball. Now to make a plastic ball, you don't have to start all over again. We're going to use some Zara Alchemy and turn the metal ball into a plastic one like this. First of all, you can use your mouse wheel to zoom out. You can see at the bottom of this document, you have a plastic ball to serve as a model. You want to drop a copy of the chrome ball because as you can see here, the detail between the plastic and the chrome is similar, it's just colored differently. With the selector tool, control click inside the sphere and then press control C and control V to make a copy of that brown circle that you created originally. Move it off to the side and then select the chrome sphere and press Control shift c to make a bitmap copy. The bitmap copy should be true color with alpha. Once you've got that selected in the drop-down list, click Create. And now that the bitmap copy is 
on the page, you can move the uh, original vector away, and we're going to deal with this bitmap copy at the moment. You're going to take the uh, camera tool, and on the info bar, decrease the saturation of this bitmap copy, make it a little bit brighter, and because it's plastic and reflections are subtle in plastic, I want you to uh, blur the thing, which is the slider at right. Once you have that looking pretty good, select the uh, circle that you copied earlier and put it in front, Control shift f the um, bitmap, and I'm going to ask you to recolor it. What you're going to do is create a uh, shaded green ovoid, and uh, I think what we want to do now is choose circle, not uh, ellipse for the, uh, for the gradient. Move that to upper left, select a lightish green color for the bottom, and then double click the gradient line to make a darker shade of green here. And I'm going to make this top color lighter still, so it looks kind of like a ball. And what we're going to do is use this object for shading. So, with the transparency tool, I want you to drag the shading up a little bit, use stained glass mode, and I'm going to play with the colors right now because this doesn't look exactly right, and actually the image underneath needs to be lighter still. So if you have this problem, do this. And once I've moved that partially transparent sphere shape over again, what I want to do is uh, create that soft highlight. And we're going to replace all those colors with white there. You can replace all colors in a multi-stage gradient in versions 8 and 9 in one step. And looking at this again, I think what I want to do is to adjust that bitmap image just a little bit more. Now when you do things like this, the bitmap, the adjustments are non-destructive and they're dynamic, so you can always change them. Now I'm going to move that shape back up top, and I think what we have here is a nice plastic sphere. Now don't go thinking that uh, sky on top horizon and, and ground on bottom is the only way to draw chrome, because there are other treatments. Here, this is what I call the chrome ball superior pose because you're looking down at it and you might see people and lamp posts and things in the picture. And most of the sphere's reflection consists of ground with only a little bit of sky at top. There's a third treatment which should be easy to draw. I call it the soft box uh, chrome treatment. As you can see this ball is in a uh, room and you're seeing the wall edges and that's about it. You can add some defined details by putting like perhaps wood slats on the floor or here's a checkerboard. Now that you have an understanding of some chrome and plastic, you don't have to limit your illustrations to drawing chrome spheres for the rest of your life. Here you can see a metal cylinder and a plastic cylinder, and the reflections are more or less the same as the sphere, but they're distorted, and this should be very easy to draw. And it'll be particularly easy to draw because I've included some stills of all of these videos in the bonus files zip archives. I want you to download them, have some fun with them. Let's talk about this on Talk Graphics, and I'll see you next month at...